the types of abuse. It could be physical, as you mentioned, financial, verbal, you know, and we'll give you some examples, sexual abuse as well, spiritual abuse and neglect. So some of the um, examples, as we're saying, that someone has control over you and your money, right? It's that money piece. Some of the warning signs, yeah. we'll kind of go through this together, is also, you know, uh, if I tell you I'm being abused, believe me. So if someone's talking to you and they say they're giving you some of these indications that Bussy just talked about, you believe them. Most people don't make these stories up. No, and like Rand's saying, that question, like she said at the beginning, it could be as simple as saying to someone, are you okay? You ask that question, all right? Whether you're their neighbor, whether you're, you know, that's a caregiver that's coming in to see you, all right? People need to feel confident or feel trust that person because people aren't just going to and spill their guts, you know, the first interaction with somebody. It's very un unlikely. But when we have consistent people, whether it's a, another family member or a neighbor or someone saying, how are you doing today? Are you okay? All right? By asking that question, you're letting that person know I'm here. So, okay, you're good? Okay, well, if things change and you want to talk, you just give me a call. I'm here for you. And it may you may say that five times. You may say that 50 times. And then now, finally, the person is saying, you know what, this person keeps asking me, and you're not being a pest. You're just putting it out there, all right? And so if that person then says, you know what, I'd like to talk, and now they start spilling, please do me a favor and don't say, oh, oh, uh, yeah, I got to go. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> and walk away. If you ask the question, are you okay, then stick with that person because you never know what you're going to get. And if you get a long story or like something that you're thinking, oh my goodness, I had no idea, just listen. And the next question should then be, I'm really sorry that you're going through this. How can I help? What, what can I do? And it may be that they just say, just thanks for listening. I, I haven't, I've, I've held that in for so long. I just, it's been, it's so good to get it off my chest. Well, if you're looking for some resources or some help, let me know. And, and you're basically standing by that person. You're not solving their problems, but you're with them in that journey. And it may be, you know what, I know an officer that, uh, here's her number, you can give her a call and making those connections. Cause that's what we're doing. Okay. And, but that's a, it's, it's, and if you're like, us and we want to fix things and while well, the garden needs to be done, I'm going to go do it. Maybe the person doesn't want that to be done. So, you know, how can I help you? That's good. I just need to listen. All right. And then, and then you're just with that person because other warming signs, like they stop, you, you go to church and you have a friend that's all of a sudden not coming to church. All right. Or they're not coming to pickleball. So you might want to call them and say, are you okay? And maybe they have the flu. Okay, good. Thank goodness. Or maybe they have an un, a, a family member or someone that's befriended them now living with them, and now they're sort of prohibiting that or, you know, keeping them isolated, keeping them from going out to their activities. That is a warning sign, folks. That's when you get that funny feeling in your belly. I talk about that funny feeling in your belly every day, all the time. You get that funny feeling, do something about it. All right? Signs of neglect. All right? No food. Um in the house or if they don't come with their food, phones are cut off, uh, things are disappearing from their house, sudden, somebody suddenly moves in, oh, I'm helping a friend. Hmm, but you're not coming to your activities, things are changing, right? You have a baseline with your family or your friends and now things are changing, take note of that. And again, you know, we live in a world today where I think, well, everyone's videoing everything, but then who's calling you? So we can, we can sit there and video, but then who's going to call 911 about what we're watching, right? Or you're, you see something happen and you do one of these, all right? Abuse can be very subtle. It's like bullying, right? Children, and bullying can happen at any age, but when kids bully, they're not doing it right in front of the teacher. So the teacher can say, hey, Johnny, that's not good. You can't do that. Or Susie, don't be doing that. There's no difference, folks. No matter what age, this can happen, all right? And so when a caregiver goes in to help an, an, old, an elderly gentleman, all right, oh, things are good. But then when the daughter walks in or the son walks in and the older gentleman all of a sudden shuts down, when I talk to, uh, do in-service training and I talk to those workers that are doing this type of care, make note of that. I'll go, that is a huge indicator. That is a red flag. That may, would make my tummy go crazy. So make note of that. And then go from there and start, you know, are you okay? Asking the, the family member, are you okay? And what the responses you get can kind of, navigate where you go with it, right? Um, go ahead. Yep. So the other th other warning signs, just in, uh, we've covered some of them, um, but one, the one that just talking about the financial aspect is someone who's handling all your money. So we also talk um, a lot around joint bank accounts. 
So many people are uh, may have joint bank accounts. I have one with my uh, with my husband, um, and so joint bank accounts are great because you know we can pay bills and we do this and that. Um, and sometimes people will say, "Oh, I'm going to be a joint have a joint bank account with my daughter or my son or whoever," um, because if something happens, then they can go and access my you know money to pay bill, whatever. Or I'm going to Florida, you know, you go and pay the hydro and all that kind of stuff. So. It's many cases that works out fine, but for those who have a joint bank account for, for money, about handling all the money, um, all of a sudden you're not getting bank statements anymore. Well, they used to come to the house, but now all my daughter's getting them all. Now I have no idea how much money I have. Well, I don't need have my visa anymore, or now I have two visas, um, and it's coming out, all the payments are coming out of this joint bank account. So now what's going on? So the control issue is happening there. But also with joint bank accounts, is, is it 50-50? If I have a joint bank account with Bussy and we have $1,000, is, is the thousand, my 500 mine and 500 hers? No. So I can go to the bank today and I could take $1,000 out and Bussy's left with nothing, legally. So what we find is that some people have joint bank accounts, don't recognize that they would trust their family that, or whoever's on that bank account with them that they'd never take the money, and yet they go, you know, to get their bank, they go to the bank and realize that there's like $5 left, and there was $30,000 a month ago. What happened, right? Those are the unfortunate calls that we get, so we always do a lot of education around who's handling the money. 